Hello, and welcome to Wyverns and Weirdos, A Journey Home. I am a Dungeon Master, Darby, and joining me as always are Zoe, playing Sevia, Emily, playing Beatrice, Laura, playing Conrad, and Johanna, playing Fall. Let's jump into it. Uh, identified the vestiges and other magical items uh, that were now in their possession, including a uh, white dragon mask that seems connected to Tiamat's return. Um, they also went on to further explore the caverns here that were once a library, discovering little bits and pieces. Um, before Sevier and Conrad had a bit of a discussion, which resulted in uh, Conrad's patrons calling out to him. Um, I think in for the first time outside of a dream. Like this is the first time they've specifically said something to him outside of a dream. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The whispers, the whispers are ever present, but they've they're usually not as coherent as uh as the call for him to return to the mists and take up a place as a ruler there so what do you think is the reaction or the expression that Seaview would see on conrad's face as those whispers are going through his head yeah so because Seaview was talking because they're quite close um when she asked him why he gets a bit funny like a bit funny whenever the others talk of home or whenever at least Seaver and Fall do. Um and um and Conrad kind of like start like um his expression looks a bit distant again for a moment. Um and like even when like briefly before then when Sevier looked sad, um Conrad had looked like he was like sad against his own will, I suppose, and then a bit frustrated at that. And that flashes against his, uh, and then he just like completely starts. Um, and um, it's not a big like um, reaction, but um, Sevier was suddenly able to tell he's not paying attention to anything around him currently. He's paying attention to something else. Whether he's just thought of something, whether he's just lapsed into thinking of something else, it's just he's not focused currently on this. Um, his body kind of like tenses a bit next to her. And then after a couple of beats, his expression hardens a bit. Um, and he's like the corner of his mouth curls a bit um, into some kind of grin, which he then just like shakes his head. And then turns back to look at her. It's like, I know you and Fall have spoken of potential for us to be friends after this, but who's to know what will happen after if we succeed in this? Whether we, whether our paths will still be crossed or whether it'll be scattered. You may have plans for home or family, or whatever it is that you two have planned. I do not know if I can be holding a part of that. Wouldn't want to cramp your style after all. <laughs> he looks like he's trying to like be like knowing, but he doesn't. <laughs> she, she watched him go through this little journey with just a little furrow between her brows. And she kind of awkwardly 
laughs off his his little joke. And she's like, Well, I mean, if you're looking for an excuse not to move in, you can just say so. <laughs> it would be strange for that to happen. I know my brothers took up residency in Manor, but uh, beg pardon, they are, um, my family are much more well off than either you or four could ever be. So, lodgings would probably be smaller. A fair assessment. There's something about her face when he says that it's a little more closed off than it has been. Interesting. And she says, well, if it is what you wish, I'm certain we also would not want to cramp your style. Hmm. But, um, if it is a ma matter of practicality, I can understand not wanting to live with others, and if it is a matter of desires, um, I don't know, Conrad. Sometimes it feels as if you are, you can be evasive about what you want. And you go very far away when you think of it. You don't have to say anything to that, it's just an observation. I suppose, uh, as I have said, it was, I had different imagining of how this would all go when I ran away. I was okay. hoping for more freedom, and I did not find that. I found less of it. Or perhaps about the same. Just with a different noose. But either way... That's the sum of it, isn't it? If you want freedom, you have to fight for it. If you want control over your own life, you have to make the steps to get it. And are you? Am I what? Making the steps to get what you want. What I want. Agreed. <laughs> he starts again and it's like he's like focusing his eyes like zap out a bit he's like it's, it does not matter what I want at the time being I must, I must only make the steps to ensure that I preserve myself to get to that point when I can consider it perhaps no offence you understand how haphazard our life has been since we've been thrown together. It has not been easy. No. It is, has been difficult to... Well... We shall see, I suppose. I cannot picture a home for myself. But there is work to be done before I can figure out where my place will lie, I suppose. <laughs> and as you say that, there's a flash in your vision, just momentarily. And it is vaguely familiar. I don't think you were in this room at all. Mm -hmm. um, but the architecture is very similar to the rooms that you were in of Strahd's Tower, Castle Ravenloft. And you yes. see this image of yourself sat upon well, i can show you um what it looks like uh -huh. uh, more or less the face will be wrong but that's basically uh, the vision you see yes we just did go with to the, your own face we did go to the throne room i remember when we yes. were there yes <laughs> and again so, he's like for gaze just like zips out for a moment and then just like again like his mouth like kind of curls a bit He's just thinking of something just beyond, beyond, just beyond reach. 
Mm. I found a book. And he reaches into his pocket and takes out the um the black tome that he got a couple of episodes ago um, from the library that had something about relevant to his particular interests. I cannot quite understand it. Can you? She shakes herself out of whatever she was about to say. And she goes, well, I can certainly try. Um... She flips through a couple of pages. Comprehend languages should still be up. It is. However, make me a constitution saving throw as you go to touch the book. I'm going to use my Conrad dice for this one. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, where's my mod? Apologies, everyone. Everything is taking forever to load. Mm. Um, I can only assume something bad is going to happen. Um, okay, Darby, <laughs> what's my con save? <laughs> uh, your constitution save... In theory, should it be just be your con mod, which I believe yep. is plus three. Yes, it is. 21. 21. Okay, so that is a success. Mm -hmm. um, so you only take four points of necrotic damage as this book, for some reason, in you touching it, um, it burns to the touch. Okay. Sevia, like reaches out to just kind of take books take the book the way she she always does when she goes to like identify something which is like the little grabby hands and she um grabs onto it and before conrad can even like relinquish his grip she immediately like lets go of it again as it burned and she like pulls back and like there was just this like jolt up her arms as she goes like he, oh. grabs, ca he catches it. Like 20 decks. <laughs> oh. What was that for? It shocked me. No, I can't remember. That didn't do that to me last time, no. did it, Darby? No. no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Cool. It's like, it, it, what? He, like, picks up the book. He, like, holds the book up and, like, looks at it and, like, just, like, flicks on the pages. I don't understand. Well, neither do I. It you could not. It shocked you. Are you sure? Yes. He like pushes it towards her again. Oh, what are you? And she puts her hands up, but she she does end up touching the book again. <laughs> and she goes to push it away, just unthinkingly. <laughs> Sorry, Is that another Sylvia. save? Um. Yeah, I think you're making contact with it. <laughs> Yep. Um, with I'll say with advantage on this one because you're not going to grasp at it. I rolled the exact same both times. <laughs> that is a seventeen. Seventeen. So that is a failure on that one. Of course it um, is. And you take fifteen <laughs> points of necrotic damage. <sighs> Okay, any other ill effects while I'm in the tap? Um, no. Okay. I was, I was tempted to, to say, <laughs> yeah, you get a level of exhaustion as well, but no, that would be, that would be <gasps> extreme. It feels okay. very bad. No good. Yeah, so she, again, pushes the book back, but then... Because Conrad was like leaning against the wall and kind of swiveling mm. to to look at her, and she's just been standing in front of him. So she like goes to push this book, and he would feel that there's like a push, and then it it just stops as she like takes a decent chunk of damage for Sevia <laughs> all at once, and she just stumbles and like gets like halfway to her knees and like has to catch herself on the wall yeah. it's almost like 
your your hand and ev that amount of damage, even like your upper, like forearm, like the back of them, just they almost instantly bruise. Oh, yeah. uh, I kind of assume... sees that happen, <laughs> and then just like he does, he does like because he was just like, oh yeah, cool. Because like he just pulls the book back. And he's like, um, ah. Uh... <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. And neither did I. Oh God! Are so... you all right? I don't think I can touch that book. Kara looks at the book and looks at his own hands. Like, I, I don't understand. I, I don't either. It's maybe it's because I'm not. Maybe it's like the not needing to breathe thing. Because I'm not properly alive anymore, perhaps. And he kind of like turns the book um, like contemplatively and just like stares down at it. Maybe it's that. Maybe. It. I don't know. Maybe it wants you to work out what it says, and I'm not allowed. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I'll just have to figure something out on my own. And he kind of puts that back into his bag. Um, if sp Specifically not looking at Sevia. She, like... Because I assume her hand will also be, like, almost numb. Mm. That much necrotic, yeah. it's, like, numb. Yeah, yeah that's horrible. <laughs> it's like, I think... What is it? It's about a sixth not being of a your. <laughs> I, actually, between the two, that's about a fifth of your. <sighs> wait, your hit points in necrotic damage. Yep, and I was already injured. Just um, from touching a book. Yep. Yeah, jeez. She shakes out her hand a little bit. And she goes, well. If I, I don't know. I thought there was maybe something I could do to help you understand it, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's something your patrons must help you with. And Conrad is like um, rummaging around in like the heat bag that he has. Um, he's. Not looking specifically at CVP, he's looking, he's trying to just like, he's obviously looking for something, and the, the thing he's looking for isn't causing this, but he's starting to look a lot, a lot more on edge and frantic, and she's like, oh, maybe it's something you'll have to take time, you know, trying to work out or something like that. Um, he just looks a lot more tense. Um, but instead he takes out, um, he's looking at like a self, I think, and like a bunch of bandages. like, I will try to help this. Um, take, hold your hand out. Oh, I've got yeah. a herbalism kit. <laughs> so, yeah. She looks as if she wants to say no and then looks back at her own hand and kind of the, the look on Conrad's face. And she reaches her hand out. So, thank you. It is, uh, hmm, I don't know why I did that. Uh, but it is, um, Least I can do. Um, Tis bad to get injured, you know, while not on battlefield. <laughs> um, and he like tries to patch her up. It's again, it's a herbalism kit. That's not going to help that, but you know, yeah. <laughs> he does it with a lot of like practice, like that, like how he'd be, be wrapping his own because he always has like his arms kind of wrapped up because he keeps mm. getting injured himself, and he's not a healer. <laughs> Usually takes quite some time till he gets healed. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of practice. Um, mm. Not of a medical student, <laughs> um, but of uh, someone who's gotten into scraps for most of his life. Yeah. She watches him. Very focused and quiet. For a bit. You aren't responsible for what the book does. But I may have to be. 
I need to find out what it's what it's doing. So it is a it's just a core a result of that. So in a sense, I am responsible. I do not know how much this will help, but I apologize. It helps. Thank you. And he like pins off the bandage. She looks over it and she goes, "My mother would have loved you." <laughs> he he like flusters a bit. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> she was an alchemist, a potion maker, herbalist. Oh. All sorts. Practical see. ways of healing. Ah. <sighs> I see. Healing, yes. <laughs> and he kind of like puts away stuff in his, his little bag. He's like, uh, my mother was quite good with um similar thing. Not for healing, though. Oh, Long. just... Similar interest in herbalism, but um not... Not for patching up. Not that I spent much time with her anyway. Many women in my family are good poisoners. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I'm... Hmm, that's not actually funny or helpful in this situation, is it? It's enlightening. <sighs> well. It... Not entirely. I did not spend much time with her. Not much I patience for me, which same. is fine. I'm a boy, so... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile... I believe for you were going back to uh, inform uh, Caleb and Bo of the group's decision regarding the mask. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, and then just um, let them know that, like, are we gonna like guard this place or something? <laughs> Was it guarding this place or guarding the mask? Uh, the place, yes, yes. Okay. That's right, because I think they were worried that, like, Arkan and his cronies were, like, coming here for a reason, so... We're if they didn't get what they on. needed, we might not give an eye on this, like, um, yeah, we'll just pass that along. So, like, uh, so do you think you're going to be, like, guarding this place or sealing it off or something? I think um, sealing it off, at least for now, might be a, be a good idea. Um, I suspect we have all we could find here. Did you did you and your friends find anything further down the tunnels? Uh, just a lot more books, really. And a little right. excerpt on Tiamat, I think, in one of them, but that's okay. about it. You, you haven't found anything? Uh, no, no uh, just, just the books here. Um, we've uh, collected them up and uh, hoping to to t take them back to the library to um, give them a proper read. Ah, oh, very well then. I um, think if there is nothing else here, then it is best that this place is sealed up for the time being, at least hmm. until this uh, this Archon's dalliance with Tiamat is dealt with. Yes, absolutely. I don't want them getting whatever knowledge they were after, unless they already did going to say if, if if we are lucky then what they were looking for here was that mask if we are unlucky then what they have found may still be, need to be found but we can mitigate unlucky by caving this place in for a time mm. excellent yes that sounds like a good idea mm. Uh, do you have much knowledge of what Arkan is trying to do with Tiamat? Do you know, do you think he will be, make quick progress or? I do not know. I do not know. I am not overly familiar with this kind of magic, but I am aware of a similar incident that isn't on most uh, records within Alexandria. 
a um, a group uh, called the Tomb Takers tried to bring a uh, city from the astral plane uh, back to the material plane. And in the process, um, their leader assimilated himself into the city and um, almost was successful in um, bringing himself and the city back into the material plane. It went for the efforts of eight valiant souls and a uh, dirty wizard. Wow, that's quite bizarre. Uh, that's a little similar. We had um, the hometown of uh, Beatrice. Uh, her, it ended up in the Nine Hells, which is weird. But nothing about assimilating into cities or anything. No, no, no. I, I, there was some weird eldritch magic going on with the with that city. Uh, with that, with that, uh, what's don't even recall if it was the whole city. It might have, um, I, I don't, it was definitely, it was the Cognoso ward. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's, it was, it, it was a whole thing. Ooh, it sounds like it. Right, well, hopefully we'll get something useful from here, so nothing weird like that happens, I guess. Yes, I'll regroup with the others and we can head off again. All right. And uh, Beatrice, is there anything you're doing as Paul's going back and Savior and Conrad are having their conversation? Uh, Beatrice is still beak first in the uh, cupboard of books and is just grabbing as many as she can and shoving them into her handy haversack. All right. Um, so eventually, yeah, Paul kind of gets back to the rest of you to say, yep, go on. And you make your way collectively back out of the library um there's nothing more that people want to do before we leave sylvia looks wistfully at a whole library that we are burying and then makes herself be practical that, is, that has mostly been uh emptied out i will note Bo and kayla she... have gone through the process of she does claiming <laughs> um that she looks back wistfully and then is like uh nothing important to our mission was down there so unless we can find what arkin and his colleagues are looking for it is of little import <laughs> did you find what you were hoping to find Conrad's asks, addressing um, Caleb and Bo. I mean, we found books that uh, would make a handy addition to the uh, the knowledge base of um, the Cobalt Soul and to the um, to the Soldier's Academy. We will pour through it and see what can be found. But for that, to do it in the most expeditious way, we will need um, a team of researchers, of whom exist within the Cobalt Reserve and the Soldiers Academy. I'm sure, a few students wouldn't mind some extra credit assignments. Always good utilizing uh, what you have before you. Good idea. Excellent. A fruitful venture for us all, then, maybe. Uh, 
All right. So, nothing more? Nothing um, more. And he... Let me just double check that this isn't too high a spell that he then needs to um, wait to get back. Uh, Full slips his hand into Sevier's, like, comfortingly <laughs> at the <laughs> moss of this library. And probably is like, huh, why is she covered in bandages? I mean, so, yes. <laughs> a thin green ray springs from Caleb's finger, uh, similar to something you yourself have used, Thevia, and you see him direct it over the, uh, the opening, um, and you see bits of the, the mouth of this quarry kind of crumble away and disintegrate as it caves in. All right. Ready to return to Zadash? As ever. And, uh, he, yes. and he casts teleport and you find yourselves um, back <laughs> where you originally started this journey outside of the, uh, the Soltress Academy. Or its tower here in Zadash. Thank you oh. for, um, thank you for your help. Um, there is ever any need that you have for me, um, reach out in some way and I will endeavor to help. Of course, it's very kind of you. Do you have any ideas of what you need to seek next? <laughs> Uh, no. The same as before, really. Just something to either give us the leg up on Arkin, or something to take us home when it's done. All right. I may be able to put you in, in touch with a contact of mine. Um, if you stay in the city for for tonight, um, come back tomorrow, and I'll, I'll get you in touch with her. Good. Or at least see if I can. That would be most useful. We very she's, rarely have guide or direction in these sorts of things. She's not got um, a direct connection to Arkan. But, uh, she knows a thing or two about cults to Tiamat. Oh. Mm. Uh, may we have a name? Uh, Kaliana. Kaliana. Yes. Of course we will yeah. await our meeting with Kaliana, Master Widogast. All right. Um... Do you know where you are staying? Um, I might, if I get in contact with her earlier, I might be able to send a message your way. I cannot remember the name of the place we're staying at. <laughs> we stayed at the Pillow Trove. Yes. Okay, there we go. Previous we... night. Yes. We've been staying at the Pillow Trove um, so far. That is where we've been, we've been stations thus far. You must have some good coin built up from your, um, your adventuring thus far. It's just a decent enough place, I suppose. And yes, we do. Right. Very much so. I will see you when I have, uh, either when I have gotten word back from Kaliano or in the morning. Whichever comes first. Thank you again, Master Widergast, and thank you for your assistance okay. today. Thank you for your Especially assistance. the uh, hairy you. And she yeah. moves her arms like, a, like an ape. Brr. While still holding Fall's hand, so she's making Fall's arm kind of pinwheel around a little bit. Right. She does these weird um. little ape arms. 
And then, then Bo says, uh, yeah, um, I can't offer magical contacts like he can, but I can offer the library, um, if you find you need to look something up. Just tell him, tell him Expositor Lionette sent you. I'll give him your descriptions so that they know, uh, give you decent access. Very useful. Uh, thank you. Much appreciated. Hmm. Thank you, Expositor Lionette. You are... You're a very nice lady. Thanks. <laughs> Still taken. Even... And she walks away. <laughs> oh, no. so, so am I. Um... Hmm. I bungled that one. Just a little. <laughs> really boggled it. <laughs> Good job. You have almost a better way of woman than I do, Celia. Hmm. He looks fussed at me, so he's like, ha ha, I'm making a, a, a joke about ha. Huh. Hmm. Fun. <laughs> Sylvia does like do a little laugh, but she's mostly just like in that little shame spiral she gets after saying something awkward. But she's just like, ah, good, good one. Hmm. Well, I suppose we scraped by that one. So um, hopefully that was useful for everyone. Yes, well, hopefully we got at least something out of it worth fighting a. Well, we, we killed Kroll, so that's looks around the street we killed Grohl so that's something oh yes that's right and Conrad turns to um oh uh, the actually the creature would still be there for now oh uh, and he gets a little like bag that has the pocket that has the little spiders in it and he's just like um in the background all people have this conversation the like little like parcel that the Exley is carrying, he like tips the spies into there. Is this in the middle of a, like, is the street crowded? <laughs> Are there people oh. around? <laughs> yeah, there's people around. It's one. never this is not be site. weird. Yeah. And like, the thing is, it's a Shadow city, abomination. So there are people walking past who's seeing it and like... It's just a weird dog, it's fine. Don't. That's, that's weird. Got but it's a city, so they're mostly just trying to keep to themselves and ignore the weird shit. <laughs> like, as long as it doesn't seem illegal, they're just- it's someone else's problem. There. Right, so what's our next step? To be... It's kind of hard because, like, I could, now that we're in a city, I could, like, um, go around and scout for information or something, but I don't really think random people are going to know about Arkham. No, it would be useful to know if he's been here or been near here, or if there's been any rumours going about. Mm, I don't I know how well-travelled everyone is here. That's true. I mean, he might be causing some chaos wherever he's going, so I guess I could keep an ear out. Hmm. Mm. Yes, if we can't, well, we were all seemingly thrown to completely random places when we came through the portal. So logic dictates that Arkin yes. and all of his little friends were thrown many random places as well. We can't find where he is ourselves. Mm. Potentially, rumours flying around about him would be the easiest way to pin him down. Unless That's we true. Have to, I mean, I could send him a scrying, not a scrying, a sending, but um, that goes both ways. Yes, he would probably be able to find out your location too. Mm. Sounds like a good course of action would be then to split and see if we can find troll for information or see any new travellers from town who have heard. I do not know how to broach the question very easily to a common folk, though, but maybe interesting. Mm. 
I mean, surely, it, I mean, I'm not exactly one for social interactions, but just asking around about, have any of you heard anything weird happening? Has to do with a man that's red. Um, potentially that could help narrow it down. Cities tend to be strange places, so something has to have filtered through. This is know. true. I Maybe think that would be best course of action. Mm. And if we look around for people who look only slightly less confused than us, then we've probably found people who aren't from here, so... Mm. Well, that is true. Hmm. Well, I think that's how we should spend our time. I'm going to deposit some things, um, and then I will investigate. Hmm. Yes, we like can all go on our merry investigations and then report back over dinner. Yes, reconvene later. Hmm. All right. Um, I'll send a sending if uh, anything goes wrong. Good. All right. And Corrid like makes some little clicking noise and um strides back into the hotel with Exley to go and dump some stuff and clean up a bit mm -hmm. and then head out. Okay. So let's. Yeah, so who's doing what in their trip around the city? Um, Sevia, potentially with four, is, yeah, gonna do what we just said, go about and look, unless four wants to be alone. Four has a dumb idea. <laughs> four was a dumb idea, okay. What's four's dumb idea? Um... Essentially, Fall is going to quickly return to his room, use his disguise kit to look like one of his old acrobat costumes, but then also put like some like scales on his skin, like dragon makeup, and one weird hand. And then is going to go busk doing like a dragon inspired routine that looks a bit like Arkan and has like Arkan vibes and then just do like acrobatics and illusion magic and then see if anyone comments on like, <laughs> he looks a bit like Arkan. Okay. Um, I love that. <laughs> do you have proficiency Amazing. in the disguise kit? I do, yeah. Okay, so roll me a, we'll call it a charisma check. <laughs> With um, with proficiency. Um, mm. Okay. To to see how the disguise, like how accurate of a costume it Wait, is. Wait, so charisma with proficiency is that charisma and the proficiency as well? Yes. So plus ten. Yes. Oh sweet, yes. So that's a seventeen. Seventeen. All right, it's a reasonable likeness, like. If someone if someone saw you and Arkin beside like each other, there'd be no question about which one is Arkin and which one is the uh, yeah. the tiefling in a costume. <laughs> but it's not a bad resemblance. Um, you don't really get anyone um, recognizing you as. as being dressed as anyone, though. Okay. Do I get any money? Uh, roll me a performance check. <laughs> okay. Um, plus ten, come on. That's a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah, so you, you... Over the course of your... Yeah, you get, you get, uh... Get uh, four silver and ninety nine copper pieces oh, nice. <laughs> at you uh, as as busking tips over the course of your performance. At least five of those copper are sevia in the first ten minutes, trying to encourage other people to you know get Fall's plan to work <laughs> and throwing her own copper into their little like hat. 
<laughs> placed on the ground and going like, Wow, this acrobat sure is fantastical. What do, do they remind me of? I can't put my finger on it. And then when that doesn't work at all, <laughs> in any capacity, um, unless you want me to roll a performance check, um, is she... Probably more of a deception check. <laughs> I'm not even going to add my modifier. That's a four. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's not influencing people at all. Well, she realizes that she is hindering fall more than she is helping. So while they're doing a less acrobatically dangerous bit, she's going to send them a little message just being like Harold and I are gonna go investigate and then she and Harold will toddle off good luck uh, to go to go see if they can do any kind of reconnaissance of Alcan with Harold occasionally darting off and see Sebia maybe pausing with her hand against the wall and going okay Let's see if it works, and then like closing her eyes and thinking real hard and, and opening her blank eyes as she goes into Harold's little brain and like observes what he is observing. And then depending on what he finds, she'll get him to come back before he gets out of range and then come back into herself and go and keep doing that as they look for anything suspicious that might have to do with Akin. Okay, uh, roll me a perception check. Okay. Um, gonna use my Conrad dice. Okay. Uh, what's my perception modifier, DM? I'm so sorry, everything is dying. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Which of us will get there first? Uh, <laughs> seven. Seven? Okay. Nineteen. Okay. Um, yeah, there's not, nothing you really pick up on um, as being particularly suspicious or particularly connected to Arkham. Okay, no rumors, nothing like that? No, unfortunately. Um, uh, meanwhile, Beatrice, what were you doing with your afternoon? So, Beatrice, with her history as a uh, mercenary, among other things, would probably know that one of the best places to find information coming in from out of a city is to head to the markets. Mm. So she's going to head off to the markets. Yeah, to, so into, into the Penta market. Yep. To skulk around and see if she can hear anything or see anything. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, roll me a, yeah, perception or investigation check on this one. I'll give you choice on that. Whoa. Perception or investigation. Let's see. Nothing wants to load. And, oh, there it is. Ah, they're much of a muchness. So, oh, that's a good roll. So that's 25. 25. Um, you catch... You don't catch anything that's a solid uh, link to Arkin. Um... <laughs> But you do hear word of um, of some sort of horde being built up, and there being rumors of it being in tribute to some great dragon. Mm. 
Uh, Beatrice would probably approach the person and say, Oh, I cannot help but hear you say something about a dragon and a horde? You are nothing, you hear me? Of course not. It's none of your business what we talk about, lady. Go on, shove off. She makes a couple of like little click noises. You sure about that? Shove off before I dispatch of you myself. Ooh, dispatch of me. And Beatrice casts calm emotions. And that is a charisma saving throw. So is that both on this guy and the guy he's talking to? Yep. All right. Twenties. Um. What's what's the DC? Eighteen. Eighteen. So one. Uh, what's to eight? Yeah, no. So one one guy succeeds. One absolutely fails with a nat one. Uh, and let's say uh, highs or lows. Highs. Highs. Okay, so if it's highs, it's the guy that said he'd dispatch of you that rolled the nat one. Mm. Uh, it's low, so it's his mate who rolled it. So the arsehole who said he'd dispatch of you made his save. Yeah. But the other guy seems, I believe, the way the spell works is he is basically completely apathetic towards you, isn't he? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, completely an attempt to suppress strong emotions in a group of people. Mm. Yeah, you're trying to cast a spell on me. You threaten to dispatch me. To be more than a threat now, and he takes out a short sword and goes to stab you with it. Beatrice. Beatrice's wings shoot out from underneath her cloak and she she'll try and like shoot up into the air. Okay. Um, he still will hit you because it's a natural 17 on the dice. Um, mm -hmm. Which is your AC. Yes, uh, it is. Let's just Double check his uh his stats here. This guy. Um so he will um yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. so he does not a lot of damage. It'll be, uh, four points of slashing damage. He hits you with his sword. So Beatrice just continues fly, flying up. She's like, Psh. my mother hit harder than you do. Um, and she's going to fly off over the market and find an alley. Okay. Um, finally, Conrad, what are you doing with your afternoon? I will, you know, after Beatrice's incredibly rowdy <laughs> little attempt, um, Conrad instead, um, after he's deposited some, some stuff, um, 
and freshen himself up a bit, he's going to head out to the fanciest possible tavern establishment in the nicest possible area. Like, and he did go on his night wonder um, when he was restless, like during the night before as well. So he did have a pretty, pretty decent idea of like the lay of the city, I guess, from where he had a wander from. Um, and basically like um, wherever he stops by, he has a drink, he might linger and then move on if he doesn't overhear anything interesting. He's specifically looking for someone gossipy enough who looks either suitably well-travelled or someone rugged enough who looks considerably well-travelled um, that he would like to that if he sees someone who he thinks would fit either of those things, he will have a conversation with them. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I so guess he's trolling me... amongst like the, the, the richer yeah, yeah. areas. So roll me an investigation or perception check. Okie dokie. Hang on. What are my modifiers? So investigators plus three perception. Oh, perception for sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see how we go. Oh, okay. Cool. That's a 29. <laughs> 29. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so you don't necessarily... 19 and then a plus 10. Um, so you don't necessarily see anyone matching the descriptions that you're making. Mm -hmm. But you spot someone who has a tattoo uh, poking out the, the, the collar of their shirt. Um... On, on their neck that you recognize as one of the points um, that was on the, the symbol to Tiamat. Oh, interesting. Kind of curved five-pointed star. What does the person look like? He um, kind of like pauses as he's walking along. He, he looking very fancy. otherwise quite well-to-do. Um, Elven man, um, you, as if you would pay closer attention, the slightest hint of like, um, of black uh, scales that <sighs> are in passing almost could be more like stubble or a beard. Um, Interesting. Okay. Um,. What does his disposition look like as well? I'll do an insight check, I guess. Yeah. That's my insight. Oh, uh, so it's like a 12. 12. Um, seem, seems to be... Seems to hold himself much like any other noble. Oh, hang on, he's a noble. It's like an advantage. 16. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Seems yeah. to hold himself much like any other noble would. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Conrad will like observe from only like, and then uh, move to step in. I say there, hello. Hello. Do I know you? No, I'm new to the city. Um, I'm looking for a. Uh, I I. My apologies. I'm new to the city. I'm um. Uh, you look like uh, someone of well stature. I would um. Apologies, my common is not so good. Uh, are you a local here? I am. Uh, excuse me, uh, what, is, what is your family name? Oh, uh, Sir Baloney. Um, I am not from this city. I'm from a couple of... Oh. Uh, uh, across the country. I'm afraid it is not a name that I have heard of, and I am well versed in the, line the uh, lineages. The noble lineages of of uh, Alexandria. Oh goodness, say. my my goodness, that is uh, most interesting. What is your um, what is your lineage? Much much too ancient for your common ears. Ah well, yes, <laughs> I am but a human after all. <laughs> We have a much shorter, shorter history. The greater proclivity for pretending to be something you're not, clearly. Beg pardon? Well, you are clearly dressed like a noble, yes, but take 
a name such as that, I... You must impersonate nobility. At least do your research and take up an actual valid name. Oh, um, Conrad looks a little bit huffy, um, and kind of like tries to speak around, like, my apology, I have, I am not usually so frank with someone I have uh, taken interest with off the street. Then why have you taken such a frank manner with me? I could not help but notice. I, ap I apologize if this is too forward. You have interesting marking. A tattoo, that is. You're an observant one, aren't you? I have a keen eye, and a keen many other things. I am of like mind and of great interest. What if do it you is know a. of the scaled tyrant. I know that she dwelled at one point. Betwixt Avernus, in a different plane. I know that she, she I know some of her worshippers. She has yes. interesting history, though, yet I am not entirely well, well versed in it. And I have heard of the different planes. I may even have experienced some of it. You know nothing of her followers, yeah? Or are I, you one of them yourself? I have heard of a few. I have this an is interest. This is to continue. Show me your mark. <laughs> oh, no. I must know that who I am talking to is a sympathetic ear. Ah. I quickly <laughs> look at Conrad's features. I don't think he has anything, unfortunately. Mm. Um, <laughs> I cannot of yet. I could, of course, say it might be in a place that you may not may not see easily on the street, but um. I am only interested. I am not of... Then this is where our interaction ends. I apologize. And he walks away. He stamps his foot <laughs> and then is like, and then, um, like, just stands there looking very huffy on the street for a few minutes. He's like, that's fine. Well, now I know. Good. And Roll then he turns my saving throw. Oh, okay. <laughs> 18. That's good for Conrad. 18. Um, yeah, so you feel um, him try to cast some sort of enchantment on you, but shake it off as he is walking away. Hmm, Conrad watches him leave, studies him, like, hmm, all right. And then he, like, um, the nearest possible, I was like, hey, you there. Yes? Do you know there's a tattoo parlor around here? Not in the tri spa. It's... Can you point me in good direction? I'll give you a tip. <laughs> Um, at, at the prospect of a tip, they look, because this is the Trispire and this is uh, a noble, they look <laughs> disgusted and walk away. <sighs> this would normally be so much easier with people of like mind, but unfortunately I do not seem to be, um, following the same culture as these people. Alas, so Conrad says to himself, <laughs> stamps his feet and storms off. That is the end of his scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, is there anything else folks want to achieve before dinner? 
Does Sevia see any petty crime? <laughs> Roll me a perception check. <laughs> Not one. No. <laughs> okay, yep. Then she's so, like, wow, what a beautifully lawful city. As <laughs> she continues on so her very I, little yep. way. So as you all return to the pillow trove, as the sun begins to set, um, you rejoin each other's company for dinner. That's where we're going to leave it for this week. See you next week, see, everyone. See you next week. Thank Thanks. you for listening. See you. Goodbye.